Nope, it's not a show and tell. It's a one day build. Uh, yeah, you guys can work it out. Adam Savage here in my cave. I have not smoothed my hair because I wasn't considering filming what I'm doing today. Uh, it is Friday, October 30th. The election is a few days away. Um, it feels like an intensely stressful time. Uh, I had a long uh, Zoom meeting this morning, three plus hours, and it was great. But I finished it and I, I kind of wanted to take the rest of Friday off. I, I I was thinking of taking the rest of Friday off and just building something for myself. And since I'm going to be uh, putting on my Chewbacca costume tomorrow to walk around the neighborhood, I thought, well, it's time to get my bow caster up and running. And um, I'll take you on a little tour through some bow casters for a second. Here is a... Uh, here is a, a, a Force Awakens bowcaster that got shattered. Here is an RPF kit I bought a long time ago. That's super heavy, beautiful, but way too heavy. Um, and I, I picked up a, uh, a beautiful casting of the uh, correct Safari bow uh, of Chewie's bowcaster a couple of years ago. And so I've had all of these pieces sitting in a box forever. And I thought, you know what? It's time to get my Chewie bowcaster on. I like, I had this scope arrangement, but I also have two of the correct scopes. And when you're trying to nail down what Chewie's bowcaster looks like, there, there's, there's a lot of different versions. There's a lot of different pieces attached to them over the different films. But so I'm not going to be slavish about my adherence to detail here. This is literally to make myself a bowcaster for my Chewbacca costume. And like I said, I didn't want to film today. I just wasn't feeling like in the mood to stop and explain everything. And so that's actually what I'm going to do. I'm not going to stop and explain. This is a lot of time lapse. I'm going to shoot this on hyperlapse instead of Apple's time lapse because it gives me more control over uh, the length of these time lapses. And it'll give uh, whoever's editing it, probably Gunther, uh, more time to ramp uh, and adjust to the speed that I'm going at. <laughs> But it's mostly time lapses. This is this is comfort build. I got about four hours here to self soothe on this Friday, and uh, yeah, join me, won't you? <laughs> here we go. Oh no, I've walked you through. Here's my uh, there's a single point scope, a body that I got from Sean Morgan. It's lovely. I've just hit it with some textured paint. I'm going to hit it with some uh, clear coat. This is one. This is this is one where, like, I looked through all the reference material I have for Chewie's bowcaster, and it's so all over the place. I am not going to kill myself trying to like. Well, what is the attachment between the single point scope and the other scope, and how many are there? like? I don't mean to make fun of past me for doing that for various things. That's not what I'm doing. I'm just like explaining that replication is a particular activity, and it is very involving. In this, I'm looking for an experience, and it's just a personal experience. So the the bar, the the line, I'm the line is wherever I want to say the line is. I just want something that feels hearty and sturdy and ready for ready for cosplaying. All right, yeah, I think I've covered everything. Time for the holy time lapses. <laughs>
Hey guys, I know that is not the most ideal way to shoot a video. I, I, I would cover more, except that this was, as I described it, a comfort build. Uh, they're not all gonna be like this. I just, Friday afternoon, I needed a little bit of time to myself. I decided to still film it, but it allowed me, it allowed me, because I was filming time lapses, that allowed me to uh, shoot this and be listening to music at the same time. And I'm here to tell you, it felt good. So thanks for indulging me with this build, all the time-lapsing in it. Um, I am very happy with how this came out. And we're gonna have some close-ups for you to witness, probably cutting them in right here. Um, my dials aren't 100% correct. I've got a couple of small differences and there's some shape differences. It's very, very difficult to parse the exact topography of what's going on in here in Chewy's Bowcaster. But I got close enough. And I've said this repeatedly in the past, what I'm looking for from a lot of my favorite kinds of props is less a perfect fidelity to the original, although that is to be sought, than an experience that feels genuine to me. And it is actually what's kept me from making my Chewy Bowcaster up until now. I've had the pieces, and the main body of this came from an RPF kit run. So did the plates and many of the machine dials here came from the same kit run. Mwah, beautiful kit run. The, the casting of the, uh, of the uh, crossbow, absolutely a stunning casting, required very little cleanup. Uh, and then I had the scope, Sean Morgan sent me one of his single points uh, and some other bits and bobs that I made. Uh, one of the innovations I made on this for myself was instead of aluminum, I used a lot of Delrin, which frankly is a lot faster and easier to machine uh, than aluminum. And since the Bowcaster is mostly black, it was ideal. Now, the final finish is what I'm about to do here. And I wanna talk about it because as this stands right now, this bowcaster is finished. It looks like the original prop. It's got about the same amount of weathering as the original. It's not a not a ton of weathering on it. Uh, and it's, it's very much like, well, look, if you were to learn one weathering technique from, from Tested, it's that you spray a piece of aluminum with black primer and then use steel wool to take off a lot of the black, a lot of that black primer. That right there is like 70% of my aging technique. Um, but because I'm looking for a specific experience and I want to wear this with my Chewbacca costume, I am going to give it a final weathering pass that for me will tie this all together. And it's going to be a dirt and grime. And I'm going to use some of my favorite dirt and grime colors. We've got some raw umber. We've got some burnt sienna. Uh, and we've got a, a, a spritz bottle of water. We've got a spritz bottle of... Uh, rubbing alcohol, we've got a bunch of paper towels, and I'm not afraid to use them. And we are gonna do a weathering pass. So, it smells like water, it's milky though. All right, uh, we're gonna start with the darker, and I'm also gonna give it uh, a spritz of rubbing alcohol. This will help this dark acrylic, this will help it sort of sink into all the little cracks and crannies. That's the, it tends to thin out the paint and it's really nice for that. And I'm just, I'm gonna be indiscriminate about this. I literally just gonna coat this whole thing and make it filthy. This is where you're kind of like, the randomness of the activity becomes really important. Don't be precious about this. This is where you really just like, Chewy's not precious about his equipment, right? He's just using it out in the field as needed. And I'm making sure that I'm covering as much of it as I can. And then I'm gonna pull off a bunch. I'm gonna put it on, take it off, put it on, take it off. That's how painting works. Once I get a basic pass, then I'm gonna go in and sort of do a refinement pass. But this basic, this is the first, uh, first iteration. Just Making sure it's getting everywhere. I'm also going to, um, I'm gonna hit it with a little, this pounce bag full of Fuller's Earth here. And what that'll do is, that'll get some of this grime to dry with the paint in the corners. Um, this is a technique for kind of making it look like it's been living in the desert. It's great 
Fuller's Earth, by the way, I mean, I don't know if you can buy it in small amounts. I have a 50 pound bag that'll last me for the rest of my life. All right, let's see here. Oh, it's already looking pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna get this going up here. Yeah. The thing is, is that the places you can't get to the paint, it's exactly where the dirt would build up. That's why this technique has such a great veracity to it. It's why it feels like such a realistic painting technique to put paint on and then pull it back off again. And there are times it doesn't feel like there's enough time in the world to keep on pulling, you know, get around all the details. But eventually, as you go, as you really sort of jam it in and keep on adjusting, you find that what you've ended up with feels like a real thing. So now I'm going in with the paint and I'm instead of pull, taking it all off, I'm just kind of adding in some dirt and grime and sort of uh, just letting it live there. Yeah, and there'd be stuff around there. Be stuff in there that you can see. This is definitely gonna end up being dirtier than the New Hope Bowcaster, or at least dirtier than it seems to be in the pictures. But that's my goal. My goal is, it's my Chewbacca's Bowcaster, not some random Chewbacca's Bowcaster. Okay. I'm doing this specifically, why, why, why is this coming up? Well, because it was recently Halloween and Mrs. Don't Try This and I, we dressed up as Han and Chewie. Uh, and it was delightful. It was really, really fun. A little girl asked me, are you the real Chewbacca? <laughs> I almost wanted to say yes, but I couldn't bring myself to lie to the little girl. I couldn't bring myself to lie in general. Um, yeah. She was very confused to hear a human's voice coming out of Chewbacca's face. The other thing that I want out of my personal props, the ones I'm gonna be taking out into the world, is that I really want them to be durable. And like, I'm hard on my equipment as you have probably surmised. I definitely don't uh, make it easy. Okay, so that's the first color. Now we're gonna go in with the second color. I'm gonna bring the camera in a little closer so you can see. All right, so I feel pretty good about that first pass, but now we're gonna bring in the lighter color. And I'm not gonna go everywhere with this. I am using this as an accent color to kind of just show some differences in how the weathering occurred. There's definitely some over here. Yep. The whole point of this exercise is I'm just adding a narrative. This has lived somewhere. It gets shoved into a closet when Chewie doesn't need it. It gets brought out in both emergencies and with some time to think about what they're about to face. This is a piece of the necessary equipment, you know? It's like, I think about these objects sometimes the way I think about my tools, like when I'm setting out to head somewhere remote and do my own, uh, do my own job, uh, I'm bringing tools that are critical for that mission with me and Chewy's the same. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so, hmm, all right, let's get upside down. Ah, yeah, some drips. Okay, take care of those. I'll also hit some of these parts with some uh, Molto pen edging. Yeah. And each way I turn it, you know, stuff is dripping out and that's great. That's actually all part and parcel of the kind of, of the kind of thing that I'm looking for here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like I'm missing a thing. What am I missing? Oh, nice, okay. I bring this and I polish off some of the paint where it lasts, where it stays. Yes, now I'm getting something cool. 
Uh, well, uh, the doorbell ringing was my bag maker, uh, Marcos, who came by to show me a, a new sample. Um, but I handed him the bowcaster and said, tell me what you think of this. And he picked it up and he's like, it looks and feels like it was left in the desert for a decade. And I'm like, yes, that is exactly what I'm going for. <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot some close-ups and I'm going to call this bowcaster ready for trooping with my Chewy costume. Now I just need an excuse to put on that Chewy costume again. It won't take much. Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build and I will see you next time. Oh, and may the force be with you. Bye. Thank you so much for watching that video. If you'd like to further support us on Tested, there are many ways you can do so. One is through paid membership and there are several tiers of that, each with their own set of unique bonuses. You can follow the links below for that or you can go to our merch store where we are always coming up with brand new products. In honor of the holidays, we've got our Tested Ugly sweater in both black and we have a white one. We have some brand new patches and this is a particular type that I made a joke about one day and now it's a reality. You know about merit badges. When you're a Cub Scout or a Boy Scout, you get a merit badge for achieving something. Well, Tested now has demerit badges for when you screw something up because that's just as important in learning as getting something right. So this is the badge for when you measure something once and have to cut it twice. <laughs> this is the badge for when you accidentally hook up your electronics wrong and you release the mysterious blue smoke that powers them and they no longer work. And this one here is for when you get your finger caught in the lathe and it almost gets torn off. That might be quite me specific. I hope that never happens to you. These are all designed by Tested's own Jen Schachter and they are not the only patches we're gonna release. In fact, these are just the beginning. If you have ideas for demerit badges that we should release, we'd love to hear them. We also still have our regular complement of posters and they're all back in stock, including my hand-drawn toolboxes. I love seeing pictures you guys send us of these hanging in your maker spaces and your offices, your man caves and your sheds around the world. Get to the store, follow the links below. And hey, some of these might make great Christmas presents for the makers in your life. Thanks you guys, happy holidays.